Scholars, before we start, find on your first page a place where I have you write in a definition of differentiability. In the slides I use, I say where x equals a. So why don't you change this x equals c to x equals a. Same idea, but we want our definitions to match up. So 3.2 is called the differentiability. We're about to spend the whole rest of first semester finding derivatives of functions, finding those functions that tell us about the slope of an original function. But in order to do that well, we have to make sure that we don't accidentally try to find a derivative where a derivative does not exist. So a function is differentiable everywhere it has a derivative. So we'll practice using those vocabulary words. And we need to know, since derivative is comes from a definition that involves a limit, we know that a limit exists when the limit from the left equals the limit from the right. And we also know that a derivative is slope. We're going to find that a derivative will fail to exist anywhere the derivative, anywhere the slope from the left is different from the slope from the right. So that's the, that's the basis of the formal definition. But just notice how that's going to appear when we actually look at a graph of a function. So here's an example, absolute value of x has a point where it is not differentiable because the slope from the left was negative one. The slope as you approach zero from the right was positive one. That makes a corner when a function is not differentiable at a corner because that corner implies that the slope from one direction is not equal to the slope from the other direction. A cusp is just sort of a fancy corner. It comes from one of these kinds of functions where you take a, a variable and raise it to a fraction exponent where the numerator is even and the denominator is odd. Mm, and then two other ones to watch out for. A function has no derivative at a place where it has a vertical tangent. And why does that happen? So think about the slope of a vertical line is undefined. Slope of the tangent line is derivative. So if the slope of the tangent line is undefined, then the derivative must also be undefined. So this is one that um, sometimes drops out of people's consciousness. So don't forget that at a vertical tangent, slope is undefined, so the derivative must be undefined, which means the derivative fails to exist. And then um, maybe this one should be first in my list. A function will not have a derivative any place the function is not continuous. Even if, notice that the slope from the left of this function, the slope from the left, well, from the left, that function piece is horizontal, so the slope is zero. And from the right, the slope happens to also be zero. So the two slopes, the slope from the left and the slope from the right, are equal. But since this function is not continuous, it does not have a derivative, in this case, at x equals zero. Most of the functions that we use are going to be differentiable. But that doesn't excuse you from first checking before you find a derivative that your function actually was differentiable and differentiable everywhere that you were trying to find a derivative. Okay, so you might remember this, we call this the alternate form of the derivative. f prime of x is the limit as x approaches a. That's an error. Let's fix that. That should really say f prime of a. f prime of a. I'm sorry for that error. So f prime of a is the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And in your 3.1 notes, you practiced using that alternate form of the derivative to find the derivative of certain functions at certain a values. Um, it's this form that sort of builds the basis of our formal definition of differentiability. Informally, a function is differentiable where it's smooth and continuous. Another way to think about it, it's where the slope from the left is the same as the slope from the right. So we're going to state that formally by using this. So function f of x is differentiable at a point a if the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x minus f of a over x minus a is equal to the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And that's essentially using the alternate form of the derivative and saying the derivative from the left is equal to the derivative from the right. There's a place for that on your 19 facts paper and you should write it in and make sure you have all the pieces, most especially the limit expression.
Okay, so two theorems that follow from our discussion here of differentiability. Since a function has to be continuous to have a derivative, if a function has a derivative, for example, at a point x equals a, then f must be continuous. That original function must be continuous at a. This comes up on the AP test a lot, and you can use it. So remember, um, even before we knew what differentiable meant, uh, we were doing intermediate value theorem problems where instead of them telling us, oh, the function f is continuous, they were saying, oh, the function f is differentiable. From that, you can conclude f must have been continuous, so you can apply the intermediate value theorem. And then, speaking of the intermediate value theorem, this is sort of like a follow-on from the intermediate value theorem. It, f is a function. f prime, the derivative of f, is also a function. So things that were true about things that are true about functions could also be true about a derivative. So if you can see this picture here, kind of helps. I've never seen this explicitly come up on the AP test, but feel free to use it. If f is continuous and differentiable on the interval from a to b, then not only must f take on every value between f of a and f of b, but f prime must take on every value between f prime of a and f prime of b.